So welcome to this special Team Eagles Zoom. And before I introduce Jean, and I wish we could see Nimitz, but I'll show you a picture of Nimitz. In fact, I'll do that right now. So here they are. Jean Parcher and her service dog in training, Nimitz. So as some of you know, especially those of you who are there with us, this was the scene, and you can see the screen at the back, that this was the St. Louis Conference. Jean just happened to come and sit right in front of me. And those of you who know Jenny and me, you know that we lost our lovely Maggie Gold Retriever this last summer. So I just couldn't leave Nimitz alone. And um, I may have even petted Nimitz before I got Jean's permission, which is so bad. <clears throat> but I had to get to know Nimitz, get my Gold Retriever fix. And then I had to ask Jean why it was that Jean, who looks so healthy, why she has a service dog. More of that in a moment. But for now, um, I don't think, I don't think Sarah is on. Let me just double check. I did mute everybody, so I don't imagine she's on. No, okay, so <clears throat> Sarah Wall also was delighted, as I was, to meet, meet with Jean. And Sarah sent me a lengthy email explaining why this was such um, a meeting made in heaven, literally. And Jenny, I'd, I'd like you, if you're unmuted, to read what Sarah sent. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. And I think I am unmuted, as you said. And, and while Jenny's reading this, I'm going to show you a few pictures of Sarah's kids and, and Sarah herself. Okay. Well, first of all, let me tell everybody that uh, Sarah is quite an amazing woman. Um, Sarah has adopted four special needs kids. And since 2005, um, she, she's actually fostered 35 different children. So she really has a very, very special heart for, for kids. But uh, as Mick said, she was so hoping to get on our call this evening, uh, but she did send this email explaining uh, why, she, even though she would, she would really make her best effort, uh, that it might not happen. And she says, my inability to attend is a perfect illustration of what goes on for families with kids with severe food allergies. Because of the daily weight that I carry as a result of having one child with EOE, which stands for eon, <laughs> get this right, eosinophilic esophagy. Gitis. <laughs> something, something close to that. Anyway, I'd never heard of it before. Uh, one of her children suffers from this condition, and her, uh, the other three children have gluten and dairy allergies, as well as other diagnoses. I cannot be away from them on a festival evening like this one. My protective senses are activated, and my daughter will be tempted in more ways tonight than we can ever imagine. It feels so unfair to be four years old and have to be without so much. There is danger. It lurks everywhere for my daughter, especially since she has 10 food allergies. We strictly avoid corn, gluten, dairy, eggs, soy, chicken, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, and oats. At conference, I was drawn to a welcoming, fluffy, golden creature <laughs> called Nimitz, whose wise animal spirit reached for my heart. Little did I know that meeting Nimitz would open my mind to the possibilities, the potential freedoms that could belong to my daughter and me someday in the future. The strain of food allergies is so personal for me and my family. I decided to live without the same foods that she must avoid to allow for a shared experience. I choose to avoid foods and it's so hard. It drains me, it challenges me, and it's my choice. I cannot imagine what she goes through each day. Her little tears are just a small testament to the challenge that she faces. Her bravery astounds me. I am so proud to be on this journey with her. Meeting Jean was an opportunity to link my daughter to someone like her, a shared experience, not by choice, but someone who lives with the same weight, the same challenge at every party, event, and get together. I am renewed as I expand my Juice Plus family 
to include such brave people sharing experiences to make the healthy living revolution a reality at any age and with any health condition. It was my pleasure to meet Jean and Nimitz, and I cannot wait to see what this journey ahead of us holds. Happy Halloween, everybody. A special prayer for the hearts of all children trick-or-treating with allergies tonight. You are loved and there is hope. Be brave and carry on. Wow. <laughs> Jean? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Welcome. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. when I read that, I cried, and I'm proud of it. So, Jean Parcher, you know, you told us before we started the Zoom that this was happening to you all the time at conference, and you began to feel like a celebrity. I think you are a beacon of hope for a lot of people, especially Sarah and her little four-year-old and the other kids in her family. So <clears throat> tell us, first of all, about your childhood, your adolescence, How, what was your health like, and were there any signs that w what was going to happen to you was going to happen? Um, it's so funny because that's such a loaded question. I mean, I went through a ton of surgeries before the age of 13. I had um, multiple ear infections. Uh, and part of it was genetics, just small eustachian tubes. And, you know, the simple solution is putting tubes in. Um, but what they figured out and, and the suspicion was that they hadn't like, fully developed was that I was allergic to milk. And really, I think it came down to being lactose intolerant along with um, a protein issue. Because even now, I cannot handle milk. So I'm completely lactose free, or I should say completely milk product free um, and cheese free because the protein in there is what we have discovered over time that is what sets off part of the problem. So I spent my childhood getting pneumonia every other year, getting bronchitis every other year. I came down with chicken pox twice. I mean, I was the sickest kid, you know, I was sick. No, just like me, Jean. That was right? my childhood too. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was a little bit overweight and I couldn't ever get rid of it. And it just, I never felt great. I always just felt okay. And I was moody and I had a temper and I am pretty certain that was brought on by foods and things that my body was irritated by. And so that was early life. I mean, that was all the way up through adolescence. Um, and then things kind of cleared up in my early college years, you know, those early 20s. But then, in, you know, in your early 20s, you, you think you're invincible and you can do anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I made it through that, but I still got sick a lot. I still came down with every virus that went around the school and I was constantly fighting allergies and, and whatever. And it's not just food-based. Like, I'm highly allergic to mold, airborne pollens, um, trees. Um, Did yeah, you know I, this then? I knew a lot about the allergy portion of it, and mm -hmm. I knew, and I knew that I was a sickly person, and I knew that I would never be like really athletic or really healthy. That was my state of mind at the time because that's how much I had accepted being sick as a part of my life. Um. And so I'm muddling through and things are okay and stuff is clearing up as I'm getting older, you know, early thirties, I'm doing all right. You know, I've got stuff managed. And when I was about 35 um, and I was getting ready to go through my master's, actually it was right in the middle of my master's degree for counseling when I was stopped cold in my tracks. Um, one day I'm at work at my graduate assistant job at the university and the next minute after having a piece of pizza, just a piece of pizza, and I was totally cheating on that lactose piece, and I knew it, but I was going to do it anyway because I was craving it. So it's just, you know, it's just an example of, yeah, I can't stay away from the things I should stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I ate that piece of pizza, and then within 30 minutes, I was sick as a dog. 
thick as a dog and we could not figure it out. And I went to the doctor every day for the next month as they tested me and tried to figure out what was going on and, and kept eyes on my um, symptoms and everything. And that was the first time that I really had a full body reaction to everything that had been going on. So shoot, my um, tower garden is going off. I hope that doesn't interrupt the no. recording. <laughs> um, so my body started reacting and basically it developed a rash from like the neck up. They thought I had lupus for a while because that's how I looked. Um, you know, I had that, that butterfly rash going on across my cheeks and my nose. Um, my joints were on fire um, and I was cold. I was absolutely cold and I was miserable and I was so swollen. I'd actually gained 10 pounds in fluid oh. and I hadn't even gone to the hospital and I wasn't doing anything dramatic. And they thought, well, okay, maybe you've got mono, maybe you've got, you know, like they were just going through everything trying to figure this out. And so they put me on um, prednisone to try and cut the, you know, to try and stop the body from doing what it was doing. And it didn't work. As soon as I tapered off, all my symptoms were back, right back up at the top. And so it finally abated after about two months. I missed finals. Uh, yeah, I had to retest all my stuff. I had to go back and, and re, yeah, pick up all my school. Um, and thankfully, the department let me do that. Um, and so I recovered everything, and I was okay. But we needed to find what happened. And so we were still on the hunt. So I was going to a nutritionist at the time, and she suggested doing an elimination diet. And we eliminated almost that whole list of food that she just listed off in her email. <laughs> I think the only thing that we figured out was safe was fish. <laughs> so I can do fish proteins. Um, but everything else we eliminated, and the things that came back were all the typical stuff. And... She was like, all right. She's like, well, obviously this isn't like the cause. She's like, what about gluten? Have you thought about that? And I was like, not really. And so we talked and I said, all right. Now, when you go gluten free, you're talking about, you have to get the proteins out of you. This stuff is sticky. And it, and it, the proteins stick together and they stay in your body for 30 days after you ingest them. Wow. Yeah, so you have to get off of gluten for 30 days, and then you have to stay off of it for another two or three weeks before you finally reintroduce it. When I introduced it, I was so sick, it wasn't even funny. It took me another two months to recover from it. Yeah, so I'm living like this until December 2014. Okay, stay off gluten, stay, use the willpower, don't go there, don't, you know, don't do it. And I did everything I could, but my body was very sensitive. So all the trace contamination, you know, they say it's gluten-free, but it's not. All of those things were issues. And I had met uh, Kim Belzell, my NMD, in December 2014, right before I got contaminated. I had two bites of a bun from Red Robin that um, accidentally got switched out. And they put the wrong bun on, on the burger. And then I was sick for the next eight months. So I spent 2015 healing. So January and February, was I was on a liquid diet. I lost over 40 pounds. My joints were on fire. I was freezing again. My body temperature dropped to, I think the total low was 95 degrees. I uh, dropped, let's see. Oh my God, so many things went wrong. <laughs> my body was like, it was losing muscle mass um, because of how deprived I was. And it, my doctor was like, okay, I need you on bone marrow soup. You've got to get something in you. So we did bone marrow soup. And then we got me on to um, the Juice Plus. And then I used anti-inflammatory support, so medical anti-inflammatory foods that were completely holistic. And we had to get away from all medicine because medicine has gluten in it. And so I had to do all of this without any assistance from painkillers and all that kind of stuff. And if Juice Plus had not have been there, I would have gotten very malnourished and I probably would be a very different person today. 
Um, and so I stayed on Juice Plus. In fact, it was, it was kind of, I built my life around it. I stay on the trio. I took almost three complete shakes a day. I was up to eight capsules of trio a day just to keep my body going. And then as I got better, I started backing down on that. And now I'm down to one complete shake a day and the trio as a regular deal, two times a day. And my body is holding steady. Um, I knew I had to do something though, because that wasn't enough. Like I, I was still, it was like playing Russian roulette. Mm -hmm. I was still really, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how do I keep this gluten out of me? You know, I, I know what it's going to do to me. It ruins a whole year of my life and financially decimates me. I've got to do something. And uh, another person, a community member that I had made contact with um, told me that there was a, there was a such thing as a gluten detection dog. And I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was my reaction when I met you. What? What? Really? <laughs> I'm like, how do I do this one? And so I did, I hunted and um, got help and found a trainer who is able to do it. And there's only like one or two of them in the U.S. And so I worked with her and she helped me get the correct dog. And all of this has had to come out of pocket because there are no systems for support. They don't know what autoimmune is. They don't know what gluten is. And, um... So yeah, so February uh, 14th of this year, Nimit, my 10-year-old puppy who is currently, dog. <laughs> yes, who's currently tearing up my hat, um, <laughs> um, came home and I started my new journey with a service dog. And it has been absolutely phenomenal. It's been terrifying, wonderful, and everything that you, know, you could imagine. And I would not be without him. Like, I, I don't even know where I would be without him, really. I just he has changed my life and I do feel so much safer having him able to detect that food and to be able to tell me yes this is safe no this is not that is simply amazing I mean <clears throat> on the one hand I'm not surprised and on the other hand I'm staggered I that, know, right? a dog, that any dog can be trained to detect something as undetectable as gluten. Yeah. Yeah, you would think that proteins don't have a smell, but I guess they do. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> Simply amazing. I'm also staggered that, that, you know, we know that a lot of people are insensitive to gluten, that some are allergic to gluten, but that you could be so traumatized by exposure to gluten. Yeah. It, it really makes you sit back and think, okay, <clears throat> most of us have no problem with gluten, but those who have a problem, it can be a serious problem. Yeah, yeah. So, Jean, I mean, this is relatively new. You've only had Nimitz doing this work for you for a matter of a few months, but can you describe to us what your future looks like now because of Nimitz and because of Juice Plus? Uh, let's see. The sky is the limit. <laughs> um, <laughs> no holds barred. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, like, yeah, I, I, um, I get, I get misaged all the time. People, people don't think I'm 39. They think I'm in my twenties. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm not just, I don't only just look younger, but I feel younger. I have more energy than I've ever had in my entire life. I feel better than I've ever felt in my entire life. And now I can get up and do the projects I've been wanting to do. Now I can get up and make the living I want to make and make the changes and help other people the way that I want to truly make the impact. Um, I mean, without Juice Plus, I would not have had that energy. I, I would not have the health healing. I mean, I was spending $70 every two weeks on medical anti-inflammatory food, and I don't even need that anymore. I mean, I had, I had eggs yesterday. Woohoo! Yes. First time in a year and a half that I've had eggs. 
and um, and I didn't react. So what does that tell you about the power of healing? I just um, I really gave my body time to to heal up and let Juice Plus really assist my body in in recovery. You know, and and I was as steady on it as I could be. And um, and I think that that has made all the difference in the world. Because I'll tell you what, I've never, ever been this healthy in my life. I've always been sick. And I think all that weight that I was carrying as a teenager and as a, as a young kid was me living inflamed. Yeah. And that was the signal. Is When I look back, I see the little signs. You know, yeah, I, after I ate certain things, I didn't feel that great. I was moody. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I think back to my weight, and the only time I dropped weight was when I got on the Atkins diet. That should tell you something. You know? Yeah. That's the only time I dropped weight. And, um, and of course, when you get on the, the later stages of the Atkins diet, they need high fruits and veggies. See, I mean, that's what he's saying. He has tons and tons of fruits and veggies. Well, I, you can't get enough. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes. You can't get enough in today's society to meet what he was saying, which was exactly what we say today. You need 13 fruits, 13 servings. Not happening until Juice okay. Plus walked in. Okay, I'm going to unmute everybody. And I encourage you to ask this vibrant, enthusiastic, healthy, young owner of Nimitz, the service dog, <laughs> anything you want to ask her, and please don't hold back because this is a time not to be missed. Probe, ask her questions. Get her to tell us more. Okay. I'm going to go first, if I may. <laughs> because a lot of background noise, I unmuted everybody, but... Wow. All right. Can you hear me? They weren't in. I can hear you, Jenny. Well, Go we ahead. can hear everybody else. Hold on a second. Yeah, mute everybody. I'm trying to identify who, who's like making the background noise. <clears throat> so I'm going to mute everybody except. Except for me. <laughs> that makes me feel very special. I have to mute everybody and then unmute Jenny first. Okay. And of course, Jean. That makes me feel very special. Okay, so you go first, Jenny. Yes, Jean, you, you, you have the most amazing story there, and I had not heard that in full at all. So, I mean, just incredible, and thank you so much for sharing. And I know we should really be talking more about Juice Plus and the impact that that's had on your life, but I'm sure a lot of people like me are just dying to ask you, how does Nimitz let you know if you have some food close by that has gluten in it, what does he do? So he will put up a paw and he'll like, okay, so I'll put the plate down in front of his nose and then he'll put up a paw and say, you know, that's his signal that says there's gluten in there. Oh. And then if I put the food in front of him and then he turns his head to the side, he's saying there's no gluten in there. Wow. So that lets me test anything because even cross contamination will let me get sick. So there could be gluten on the plate that's contaminating other parts of the food, and then that'll you know that needs to be dealt with. So um, and once something's contaminated, there's no going back. So I usually end up having to get a fresh, fresh plate. Well, you you have an incredible dog there, and I tell you, Juice Plus is also an incredible product. So uh, thank you for sharing that. If you want to open up. Okay, if anybody else has a question. Yes. Um, well, I, I just found out that one of my nieces, uh, her daughter is celiac. And she's only like uh, seven. And uh, it, it's made a huge difference in her behavior and lots of other learning, learning difficulties that she was having. But my niece also decided to go gluten-free and just discovered that she has not had a migraine in two months and uh, she was constantly having a migraine. So I'm real interested in finding out where you got your dog because they can afford a dog, so, uh, a service dog. <laughs> yeah, no, no <laughs> but problem. I, I would pass that along to her. So, um, but yeah, that's an incredible story. Do you have any problem with gluten in um, non-food items? Because there's gluten apparently in other things 
like shampoos or uh, yes. do you react to any of those? Yes, I can. Um, and in fact, it was such a great thing because when I went to St. Louis, the Marriott had put up soap that was gluten free and I was so grateful because I hadn't brought any with me. It was the one thing I'd forgotten. <laughs> So I was I was so grateful to the hotel for having that um, that option. But yes, soap, shampoo, toothpaste, um, your mouthwash, Twizzlers, Twizzlers. It, you wouldn't think it, but Twizzlers has wheat, and that wheat protein is usually attached to gluten. Um, so yeah, all of that is a part of the picture, and and he has to detect and make sure that I'm clear on all of that. Um, and then yeah. the other the other part of your question is I, I talked with my trainer about the right type of dog first. And then we went yeah. hunting for breeders who had high quality dogs that would have the right drive, that would have the right um, qualifications for what I needed. So consult with the trainer. Make sure that you're getting the right dog for what you need because they're each individual. So are there more than how many trainers are there in the country? And where are they? Um, the one I have, Don Shu, and it's S C H E U, is in. I think she's in Missouri, and she does a lot of my training online, which I think is fabulous. Um, and then she is in the process of training two more people. One is in Brazil. <laughs> uh, one is in, if I remember correctly, Denmark. And then there's another couple of people that are getting trained here by, by Don in the States, but they're not fully up and running yet. Um, so you're going to want to look up Don Shu. And Mick, later on, I can get you some info if you want to pass it around to your team. Yeah, please. For, for her, for the trainers, mm -hmm. so that they can reach out to her. Because Sarah will want that too. Yeah. Th yeah, that might be the easy way. Okay, Ginny, you had a question, I think. Let me, uh, whoa, wait a minute, I can't find it. There we are, yes. Unmute, Jim. Okay. Well, two of the questions have already been answered, and Jean, thank you so much for sharing your story. I deal with people with gluten intolerance all the time. And um, I've never had somebody so gluten intolerant as you are, though. But growing up myself, I was gluten intolerant and did not know it, and I was lactose intolerant and did not know it, and I was sick from age zero to age 48 until my husband got cancer and we went to a naturopathic doctor and found out uh, we both were both lactose and gluten intolerant. Wow. And you talk about migraines. I had migraines all my life and ear, nose, and throat infections. And I was on antibiotics every six weeks like clockwork and then every five weeks. And tonsils out at age four thinking that would help. Didn't do a thing. I can, I can track your story and yeah. I praise God that you found the answers, but I never would have thought of a dog that could uh, be trained to sense when there's gluten in something, and especially like you say with shampoos and soaps and different things other than food. And you're right, there's wheat in a lot of things. It yeah. Is crazy. It is crazy. Absolutely. Gosh, you and I really have the same history. <laughs> You know, I, I, am, I am not so gluten intolerant that I can't have it once in a while, but I know immediately after I have it, the symptoms are there. I have the drippy in the throat and the running of the nose, and that's all gluten. It, yeah. it's it takes less than 12 hours for me to figure out that's what's happened. Oh, I, I, I can it. figure it out in two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's that fast. I, I try not to get contaminated, so it takes me a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, do we have one last question for Jean before we thank her and let her go? I'm, I'm looking for a hand raised. And most of you aren't visible, so <laughs> that's hard. If there's not, I do have one other additional piece. Yeah, please, Jean. So I thank you, um, Jenny, for saying what you said. I forgot to mention that I'm dyslexic and I have a learning disability. So do I. And <laughs> Yeah, and, and when you said that, I, I was thinking about it, and I, I realized, too, that having been so sick as a kid made it very hard for me to learn, yeah, yeah. and I'm pretty certain that the gluten has had an impact on that, because now I look at the 3.89 GPA I came out of my master's degree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
And I go, you know, I was probably having a hard time with gluten all the way through my educational experience. And that made the dyslexia worse. It made the learning disability worse. And all those struggles started going away as Juice Plus got into my system. So um, I'm pretty certain that if I'd had the correct nutrients growing up, that it might have changed the course of my life. Sure, it would have. But it's not been too late to change the course of your life. Never too late. Because are you kidding? I'm just getting started. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Jean, you're wonderful. Thank Your you. Your story is inspirational. And I think you are a celebrity and you need to be more of a celebrity so that more people can hear your story because it's a story of hope. Thank you. So Jean Parcher. Huh? I'll take your advice. I'll take your advice and get up on stage. Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it as soon as possible. NMD next year, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You guys heard me say it here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jean, thank you so much. You're special, <clears throat> and uh, we'll be in touch. You'll send us more info. And with your permission, I'll give everybody on, on our team uh, how to contact you. Absolutely. And I would ask them only to contact you if you can help them the way I know you'll help Sarah and her family. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I, totally inundated. <laughs> that's a, no, it's okay. Um, it's, it's part of what I do as a counselor, and I would never turn anybody away from questions. So please ask away. It's okay. Fantastic. Bless you. Thank you. And have a great future, Jean Parcher. Thank you. I look God forward bless. to meeting